Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. In the previous one, we learned about Bitcoin, how its decentralization was achieved, and why we chose it as layer one of the internet of value. Now we're gonna continue with layer two, which is RSK. There are many topics you will need to study to really understand how RSK works, but even so, I'll try to explain it to you in the simplest way possible in this first video on the subject. And then at the end, I'll give you some follow-up steps to continue with your learning. So what is RSK? RSK is a layer two platform over the Bitcoin blockchain, adding the capacity to create and execute smart contracts with Bitcoin as fuel. And it also provides scalability by allowing more transactions per second with lower transaction costs and it allows new use cases and new ways to create value by integrating dApps. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with the subject, smart contracts are protocols recorded and executed in the blockchain that computationally ensure compliance with a contract between multiple parties. Now, in other words, they are programmable contracts. Or to put it another way, it's like granting a program the capacity to manage digital assets. In order to be executed, smart contracts use cryptocurrencies as fuel. The quantity of fuel consumed depends on the complexity of the contracts. Now currently these act as the basis of any decentralized application on a blockchain. So why was RSK created and what makes it unique? Well, Bitcoin is the number one cryptocurrency. Out of all the different cryptocurrencies, it's the most robust, it's the most secure, and along with the other characteristics that we've mentioned in this video, it also has the largest user base. Part of its security lies in the limitations made in its operations. These are limited because they serve the purpose for which Bitcoin was created, which is simply as a means to store and exchange value. Most decentralized applications or dApps require more complex instructions that can't be coded into a Bitcoin transaction. It's actually currently impossible for Bitcoin to support smart contracts without using a hard fork. This is why we introduced RSK. RSK enables the execution of all types of smart contracts using Bitcoin as their native currency. And this generates a symbiotic relationship in which RSK provides Bitcoin with scalability, the possibility to execute smart contracts, faster confirmation times, and much smaller transaction costs. That's great, but how is this possible and how does RSK work? Well, to achieve the objective of being the perfect complement to Bitcoin, RSK uses multiple concepts that fuse together harmoniously. First, it's important to note that RSK is a side chain. It's a secondary blockchain, which is commonly known as a side chain. It is different from the Bitcoin blockchain, but runs parallel to it. Its currency, Smart Bitcoins, or RBTC, has a one-to-one -one relationship to Bitcoin. By means of what is known as a two-way peg, the currencies from both platforms can be exchanged freely and automatically. The two-way peg makes it possible to transfer value from one blockchain to another. This way, Bitcoins can be sent to RSK, where they are converted into Smart Bitcoins for their use in smart contracts. The same mechanism allows the return to Bitcoin of what is no longer required, converting smart Bitcoins back into Bitcoins. This is achieved because there's no real conversion of cryptocurrency. What actually happens is that a certain number of Bitcoins are blocked in the main blockchain, and at the same time, the same number of smart Bitcoins are released in the RSK blockchain and vice versa. To secure its blockchain, RSK uses a technique called merged mining. This allows Bitcoin miners to mine blocks of RSK and to be compensated for it without incurring additional energy costs. And this is possible given that both RSK and Bitcoin use the same proof of work algorithm, double SHA 256. Due to its greater number of blocks per hour, RSK has a lower difficulty level than Bitcoin. So the solutions that are valid for Bitcoin are also valid for RSK. These are transmitted to both networks as proof of work. While the solutions that are only valid for RSK are only sent within the RSK network. Currently, no two-way peg can function in a totally trustless and independent fashion because although RSK has the tools necessary to verify the transactions occurring in the Bitcoin blockchain, Bitcoin cannot verify the transactions that occur on the RSK side. 
This is why the Bitcoin part of the two-way peg depends on what is called a federation or a group of trusted third parties. Each member of a federation is usually called a functionary. And in some federations, functionaries have access to the private keys that enable transactions. This is not the case for RSK, where there is greater security. In RSK, each functionary protects a hardware device known as a hardware security module or HSM that stores a key required to access the blocked Bitcoins, but the functionary does not have direct access to this key. Only upon receiving the RSK blockchain command do the HSMs use the keys to sign off the transfer transaction and only with the agreement of the majority of the devices are the Bitcoins unblocked. This type of custody on behalf of an external federation is beneficial in the sense that although it is semi-centralized, there is no single weak point to be attacked and the members of the federation can be held accountable in case of absence or failure. And once Bitcoin allows the verification of the external SPV proofs, the role of the federation as custodian would no longer be necessary and RSK would become a completely trustless system. Another method of improving the decentralization of a two-way peg is the implementation of a drive chain. However, we will not be digging into that in this video because RSK is not implementing a drive chain yet as the community is waiting for the merge mining level to reach more than 70% to implement a drive chain. This gives the custody of the blocked BTCs to Bitcoin miners, allowing them to vote on when to unblock the Bitcoins and where to send them. But bear in mind, this vote is not carried out by humans. It is automatically performed by software. The miners vote in the Bitcoin blockchain and the greater the participation of honest miners in the drive chain, the more secure it becomes. A mutual benefit exists between a drive chain and merged mining in that the more miners participate in a drive chain's merged mining, the more secure their drive chain become. The problem with the drive chain is that it requires a large percentage of the total Bitcoin miners to participate for it to be secure. The RSK white paper set down a path to migrate the current two-way peg system to a drive chain once the desired security conditions are in place. Now the current two-way peg RSK model is a hybrid one, which is decentralized in one direction using SPV proofs and in the other using the federation. To discourage double spend attacks on transfers between blockchains, RSK uses a long confirmation period after each blocking of BTC and RBTC. One of the objectives as part of the vision of the Internet of Value is to generate interoperability between blockchains, in which all of these remain under a layer of abstraction, which simplifies interactions between both developers and users. RSK took its first step towards this goal by becoming compatible with Ethereum, which is the main smart contract blockchain. RSK is a Bitcoin community that seeks to expand the capabilities of Bitcoin while keeping its central values intact. For those who would like to continue learning, you will find sources of information in the description below. My name is Leah, we thank you for joining us and we would like to invite you to watch our upcoming video about the next layer required in the construction of the Internet of Value, which is the RSK Infrastructure Framework or RIF.